I got this HP VR headset hoping for an increase in tracking quality and resolution. I hate to say it, but I only got one of those things. This is the HP Reverb G2, a PC VR headset that retails for $599 US dollars. First, I want to go over some of the specs and stuff. I'll try and make this short, but you can skip ahead with the timestamps in the description. One of the most impressive specs is the 2160x2160 pixel screen at 90Hz. It's a 4K screen. I would have loved to see 120Hz refresh rate, but the 90Hz is smooth enough. It's also got a limited IPD setting, which is the distance between lenses on your headset, with only 8mm of adjustment. I'm lucky enough to have my eyes right in the range of 60 to 68 millimeters, but your mileage may vary. There's other stuff, like the inside out tracking, so you don't have to mount cameras all over your room, replaceable fabric fish cushions, built in microphones, and headphones that drop down to go over your ears. The controllers do take some getting used to. They weigh in around 160 grams, which is about 60 grams more than the Oculus. That's not a lot on paper, but it does kind of get noticeable. Oh, and one more thing, the cable is 6 feet long and has an inline adapter, which all the cables split out from. I actually don't mind it and found it a perfect length. It connects to your PC with DisplayPort and USB-C, but comes with adapters for USB-A and Mini DisplayPort. It plugs into the wall with a separate adapter. Now with all of those specs, you would think it's a pretty good headset, right? No, it's actually really disappointing. Everything about the headset is great except for the tracking. When I first put the headset on, I was impressed by how clear the screen is. There's a very little amount of screen door effect or god rays, and the 90Hz refresh rate is playing smooth. I wish I could show you the screen, but my camera won't do it justice. Then I hopped into the main game I play, Beat Saber. For those of you who don't know, it's a rhythm game where you just slice blocks. That's about it. I know it doesn't sound like much, but it can get pretty intense and you need to have really good tracking to play. So what's the issue? The first part is that the head tracking isn't smooth, for lack of a better term. I'll try to show this as best as I can, but it's like the headset is overcompensating for my movement, or maybe just has a very slight delay, but it seems really jittery when I make small movements. Right here I put the headset down on a table, and then I just bump the table. And that's how shaky it is. But that's not the main issue. The main issue is the controller tracking. It's just plain bad. Watch as I swing my arm a little too fast, and the controller completely loses tracking for over 5 seconds. Like, what is this? This makes the whole experience so much worse if the headset thinks your hand is across the room. It just has such a hard time finding the controller again once it loses tracking. I don't really know what could be the cause of this. Maybe bad software or because the cameras are bad. And also the controllers use visible light to track instead of the Oculus's infrared. Maybe it's more prone to interference. And it's not just in Beat Saber. Other games like Blast Zone have the exact same issue. Like, I don't have much to say about this. I know this is going to be one of the shortest parts of the video because it's just plain bad. Anyway, moving on to the software, it's also bad. There are numerous posts on the internet of people trying to fix Windows Mixed Reality. That's right, it uses Microsoft software on an HP headset. The Windows Mixed Reality portal is okay, but I think it might be the cause of some of the problems. Other than that, it's okay and you don't really need to use it, it's just like the home hub for the headset. You can also have it go directly into Steam VR if you want. Now don't get me wrong, the other parts of this headset are amazing. I think the design, while simple, is great, and the headset is overall pretty nice. The cable is also okay, except for this little clip they provide. It really doesn't help at all, and kept falling off. My dog actually chewed it up. The headband is not the worst thing ever. Once you get a good adjustment, it's fine and you don't really notice it. It's soft, but you have to make sure you find a good adjustment. Otherwise, it's just annoying and too tight or something. And again, the controllers. They aren't too much heavier than the Oculus on paper, but they definitely feel like it. It almost feels harder to move because you're swinging around heavier objects. And the haptics are really weak. For small vibrations, you can barely feel it. Yeah, so I actually contacted HP and got a new headset. Guess what? That has the exact same issues. The support wasn't amazing, but I can't really draw a conclusion on that because I'm still trying to get a refund for this headset. Alright, now for the conclusion. Basically, this is a great headset on paper, and that's where it stops. The head tracking is mediocre and the controller tracking is... substandard, poor, inferior, distressing. I really want to recommend this headset, but I can't. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.